Hi everybody, it's Mr. Francis. Um, today, for our, our uh, segment, I would like to take you through some of the things that I do personally um, in getting myself vocally ready for uh, a show. I like, to, um, I like to do a lot of these on my own before I even get to the theater or I just get to the theater early and then I just kind of find a corner and, and do it on my own. Um, this is one of those uh, those things that an actor takes a, takes it upon themselves in order to prepare. Because we do have vocal warm-ups uh, before shows, but usually they're more generalized to help warm everybody up uh, in, in a way that uh, is more of a generalization, uh, uh, a, a general warm up, so that people can just sort of loosen up their vocal cords and be ready to sing whatever uh, songs they need to. Um, but a lot of times we're doing character voices, um, which we'll get into uh, a little later in this segment, and I'll, I'll explain all of that. But um, basically just to warm our vocal cords up, um, I like to start uh, at the very beginning of the alphabet, and I like to explore my full range uh, of of what my voice can do. So I'll just start with uh, you know no need for the for the vowels. I just start with B, and I start at my lowest note, and I go all the way up to my highest note. So I'd start with B. start with D E this is the one that you can actually do vowels the next one um, I just cut the vowels out I just go through the entire alphabet with that that vocal uh, range warm-up and it's at your own time you don't have to go as uh, you don't have to rush through it you will find that somewhere around J, K, L, M, that you're going to be able to hit higher notes or even lower notes. And that's that's great. Don't try to push it uh, from the beginning because uh, your your voice is probably not warmed up yet. But around J, K, L, M, you might find that you're able to hit higher notes or lower notes. And that's great. But like I said, take, take it at your own pace, at your own time. Don't try to push it because you might wreck something. Um, this next one I cut the vowels out of because uh, it is just a a vocal warm up. Like, again, that I like to do for myself uh, that warms up my diaphragm. This is great for singers because a lot of times we have to uh, hold notes um, uh, for an extended amount of time. Like sometimes, uh, you know, you might have to hold it for uh, four counts of eight. Or in some cases, in the uh, one of the when I did Matilda, an actress was uh, she had to hold it for 12, 12 whole counts of eight, one note. Um, so you never know. Um, this is really good for that. It uh, gives you uh, some breath support, and it also warms up uh, the muscle called your diaphragm, which is the muscle right above uh, your uh, or actually right below your stomach, and. Uh, um, if you put your your here, if you put your fingers right about here, and you go ha, you will kind of feel a muscle that pushes your fingers out. Now, don't you don't want to you don't want to force that. Um, just let it happen. And through this warm up, I go through all of the consonant um, uh, letters in the alphabet, and I start with B, and it's I just go. Ba 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 and then I go on to C and sometimes with letters that have either a soft or a harder sound you can choose to do both or you can just pick one. Uh for this for for this exercise I'll just go with the the harder sound of C. Ka 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 
Duh. And what you're not going to want to do, which I'm, I kind of caught myself at first, is you're not going to want to bounce your, your shoulders because then um, you're not using... Uh, you're not using your diaphragm. You're actually, you're just sort of dancing. Um, <clears throat> so you want to keep your shoulders uh, straight. <clears throat> and da, 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 da. And you just go all the way through the the alphabet with that one. What's fun is once you've gone through the entire alphabet, you can go back to B and start doing the, the consonants that go together like bruh and blah and cl and cr and dr and all of those, the sh, because um, st, sw, all of those. Um, and you can have it on a list of, of uh, if it helps you. Because um, <clears throat> sometimes we have to use those, those sounds together uh, in a song or in our lines. And it's important to, um, no, if if your character in your lines, if you if you're more vowel heavy, or if you say if you have a Russian accent, you're gonna want to warm up all those K's, um, uh, and and the harder um, the the harder back of your throat consonants. Um, so it's all a lot of the stuff that actors do to prepare themselves bef before you even get to the theater. Once I've warmed up vocally, I try to um, uh, get my mouth. Uh, be able to wrap itself around words and I utilize uh, tongue twisters which I'm sure all of you have have done before um, she she sells <laughs> she sells seashells down by the seashore um, that one's great one I have always have a, have had a problem with that one I stick to um, red leather yellow leather red leather yellow leather red leather yellow leather red leather yellow leather and I also like um, good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood. And I like to stick those two together. Red leather, yellow leather, good blood, bad blood. Red leather, yellow leather, good blood, bad blood. Um, you can find a lot of uh, tongue twisters online. Um, uh, there's a lot of fun ones. Um, I also like... I messed this up last time. Uh, <laughs> I switched them. Uh, the... The big black bug bit the big black bear and the big black bear bled blood. Um, again, I like to just do these on my own. But of course, I I drive myself uh, usually to uh, rehearsals. So you might want to ask your chauffeur if if it's okay. Uh, they, they may not want you doing uh, tongue twisters in the car all the way to the theater. But... Again, these are things that an actor does on their own to prepare themselves before they even get to the theater. Or, or you can just get to the theater and, and, and find a corner and do it yourself there. Um, but I hope you are excited uh, because I heard a lot of you last year. I, I think I, I heard a lot of you during um, Oliver. Come to think of uh, there, there were a lot more of you during Oliver that uh, mentioned... Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as being one of the shows that you wanted to do. So I, I really hope you're excited because uh, Miss Christie and I are uh, when we when we heard that that was the show that, that that's being done this summer. I think it's a perfect. <laughs> I think it's a perfect time um, with what is going on in the world and the craziness. I think it's the perfect time to do a show like Willy Wonka um, because I think people need, uh, I think people need a golden ticket in their candy right now. So I think, I think, um, I think we'll, we'll have a lot of happy people that we're doing this show. Um, one of the things that we are going to play with, um, which I love are accents. Um, I, I always kind of feel a little naked when um, I don't have an accent. And accents really don't have to be um, uh, sort of, uh, they don't have to be the way a person talks because of, of where they necessarily are from. Sometimes you can uh, have a vocal quality. This is where uh, character voices come in. Um, in the last show that I did, um, called Xanadu, uh, because I was sick, I was sick for a good portion of time. Um, I lost my voice because I was I was doing Matilda, 
and you know I was a loud, uh, um, angry. Uh, I was I was Matilda's father, so I was I, I had a lot of lines where I was I was always kind of shouting, um, but I had to protect my voice. But I was still sick, so I had to work through that. And you and you know when you're in a show and you're sick, you just kind of push through and you do whatever is necessary to uh, just make it through the show. But I already had kind of one foot already in. In, in Xanadu by the time uh, the show was wrapping up. So uh, I kept going and, um, excuse me, drink my tea. Um, but I lost, I completely lost my voice. And uh, it was to the point where wherever, whenever I was speaking, nothing came out, it was just air. And as my voice started to come back, I really only had about four notes in the bottom of my register. It was all down here. And so for that first couple weeks of my voice coming back, I did all my lines down here. And then I sort of, because this guy was from California, I just sort of layered on a Californian sort of surfer onto it. And it worked. It worked for the character. So I ended up having that character uh, voice uh, through the entire show. Um, and I even sang, I even sang down there, um, which was kind of fun. And so uh, you can go around your house. Um, <laughs> I still do this, um, uh, putting stuff away. Like if, if my, when my niece's uh, nephew were over, like if I was putting away their toys, I would pick one up and I would, you know, whatever I picked up, I would come up with a little voice for them. Like the smaller an item, you know, like, you, you, it's probably going to have this you know, smaller voice like this. Where, you know, a bigger item is probably going to have a bigger voice like this. So you can ex you can kind of actually um, explore with that. Uh, what voices would you uh, give to a anything in your house? Um, like the giraffe back there. What kind of voice would that thing have if you had a, a conversation with it? Um, those kinds of things, those kinds of uh, things are fun to explore. Uh, in the vocal quality of, of how you're going to use your voice. Um... And we can explore those a little later um, as as we get into rehearsals and we we're having fun kind of figuring out, like like I had to figure out what I was going to do with that voice and well, it worked. Um, but today I'd like to kind of uh, talk about accents because accents are so much fun. But what we have to be careful of is that a lot, of, like say if we were, uh, we, we, we can't do an accent badly um, we, cause then it's almost like you're making fun of it. And sometimes a lot of, uh, times it makes everything sound a little too cartoony. Um, especially if you're, if you're, uh, disrespectful, uh, to the, to the people who have that accent. Um, like say if we were doing, uh, we're doing Oklahoma and we had, we told y'all to have a, a, well, an accent. That's, that's more of a Louisiana accent. Uh, not not necessarily an Oklahoma accent, so we probably wouldn't have this one. Um, we Oklahoma, o Oklahoma, Oklahoma's a little more grounded. You kind of have the question that Louisiana has, but um, it's more sort of in, it rolls around in your mouth. Um, now, if you go over to Texas, that's your your traditional Southern drawl. Um, and then you go up into uh, Atlanta. Atlanta has all the time in the world because they just, it's so hot. So they just sit on their porches and drink tea. Um, but then if you go down into Georgia, into, <laughs> into Southern Georgia, that's, your, that's the Southern accent that everybody's sort of used to. Um, you slip over in Kentucky and Mississippi. You know, you're going to have different, uh, uh, you're going to extend the vowel sounds or or harden the R's uh, in different places. Here in the in the world that we're going to be exploring in, uh, in well, in what is now the United Kingdom, um, a lot of those elements are, are uh, intact. There's a lot of sing-songy in, in different accents, which, uh, and there's a lot of uh, some of the harder the harder R's, and then there's some uh, emphasis on vowels. I'm gonna take you through some of the basic ones that that we're probably gonna play with. These are the the most basic ones that we're most likely going to ask you to at least play with 
for a while. Um, and if any of you are, are, are sort of scared about doing accents, um, don't be. I'm sure you're a lot more, uh, I think your ears are a lot more attuned to it than you think they might be, mainly because of um, the Harry Potter films, which uh, are a great source, um, which I would ask that maybe you guys brush up on. That would be a I would that would be a better source I think than watching the um, the 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 Willy Wonka movies. We don't want you kind of we don't want you uh, doing uh, impersonations of those uh, characters. We want we want to uh, create our own and uh, do it more so uh, as Roald Dahl uh, imagined in the book. If you can read the book before uh, before camp or through camp, that would be awesome. The uh, the book is a probably our one of our best sources. Um, there's a lot of uh, you know things that that never make it into the movie. Uh, little things that you can glean uh, as far as the characters are concerned. But <clears throat> your standard uh, accent is going to be. Uh, you can see it says Birmingham, but they don't pronounce it Birmingham. It's Birmingham, uh, Bur uh, B uh, Birmingham accent. Um, it is a uh, your Birmingham is. I'm still in Southern. Uh, Birmingham, your Birmingham accent is still a little sing-songy, but it's but you but you're not going to do the but you're not going to cut off. You are going to say all of your consonants, but. Um, this one is the most basic of what you hear most of the, most, most of the time with an English accent. Um, <clears throat> the sing-songiness of it is, uh, you'll hear, <clears throat> you'll hear it most of the time in, um, it's more of the working class, uh, people that, uh, have the Birmingham, um, accent. It, it, it is sort of that clipped uh, British accent that uh, is more direct that you'll hear um, most people in the UK speak, Birmingham. Um, now, there's also the proper London accent. Now, London, um, you hear you hear the London accent mostly in um, <clears throat> uh, things like Downton Abbey, um, all the rich people uh, speak the London accent. Um, uh, there is a, a more of an emphasis on uh, your vowel sounds and having everything sound a little snootier than it needs to be. The one there's one percent of UK that speak the London accent, and mostly it's the Queen and. The British royal family. So we may explore this, and we probably won't. <laughs> but it's good to know. Um, now, Bristol, Bristol. Um, these are your these are your farmers and your working class. Um, in in that the a good example is the word uh, the the word car. You're not gonna say car, or uh, in the London accent, you're not you're not gonna say it like car. Oh, look at the car. No, in Bristol you're gonna say car. It's the car. Look at the car. Um, these are this this. Uh, you'll hear Hagrid. You'll 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 hear a lot of uh, Hagrid has the Bristol, um, and it is. It, it, it's a little. I, I call it earthy. Uh, you can tell that the the, uh, the Bristol's uh, these are the people that they they work they're the working class they're they're the ones that sound like they do things like build cars and farm and it it is sort of it, it lends itself to um, sort of the more Irish uh, sound. But it's grounded. It's more grounded, and we are uh, uh, Bristol will probably work with a lot, um, as far as uh, probably uh, Charlie's uh, father, 
and his his mum, and probably the grandparents as well, because they're all working class people. Um, now Leeds, <laughs> the Leeds accent uh, is very sing songy. You'll hear it mostly. It's mostly called the the. Uh, the BBC English, you you hear it in all the series, and they, they speak very fast, and uh, everything sort of runs together. Uh, if they have a monologue, it all, it all sort of runs together, and they have one one breath to do it all, and they go they use all of uh, their entire range, uh, going all over the place, and they say don't. It's more of your Yorkshire English. Uh, they don't is a is is your, is a good word to try to uh, nail uh, when trying to do the Leeds or Yorkshire. Uh, it's a don't. It's not don't. You're not going to hit. You're not going to be as proper as London and posh. You're going to be uh, a little more. Um, uh, it's more of a throwaway. Don't. Sort of like a leprechaun, but not leprechaun. You're not going to be a hard your ire. It's not going to be the hard ire of, of Ireland, like you're smiling the whole time. But you do have the sing song. It's still rooted in London, but. You're going to have a, 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 a little more of a run, run around and uh, running everything together because you're in a very bad rush because you've got a very busy life. <laughs> now, uh, uh, this, this one's actually going to be fun to play with some of the, um, uh, the more harried parents. Uh, the, the, the parents that are, uh, like I would say, possibly uh, like Violet's dad would probably... <laughs> Would probably have the the more leads acting because he's he's sort of at his wit's end with her with her. Uh, now these are fun. Um, there's now Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle. They sound they they are the the English that always sounds like they're asking a question. Uh, you'll hear this in in a lot of the um the BBC comedies. Uh, there's always that sick chair that comes in. <laughs> And uh, she doesn't quite know what to do, uh, what to do. Um, Newcastle, we're, we're, we might play with for some of the more, uh, some of you more advanced. It's a fun, fun accent, um, Newcastle. Um, and it is uh, one of those that uh, it, I like to think is more of a, a comedic character. Um, the Newcastle, because uh, the the rhythm is a little more difficult, but it's going to be fun for for some of you more advanced people to to nail it. Now Liverpool, Liverpool is sort of like Newcastle, but Liverpool, you have more of an emphasis on on the vowels. You like the vowels, and whereas Newcastle is a little more of the the high clipped Irish. And the question and the lilting, Liverpool uh, is more grounded, like, uh, and more of in the back of your throat. Um, like, think of the Beatles. Um, <laughs> uh, if you if you if you can, um, you, you probably, probably can find uh, Beatle interviews, uh, early early Beatle interviews, um, where they they're from uh, Liverpool, and it it. It is more grounded and in the back of your throat and more of an emphasis on the, the vowel sounds. Um, uh, try to stick to like interviews with Ringo Starr um, if, you, if you're going to look the, the Liverpool up. But Newcastle <clears throat> and Liverpool, <clears throat> fun accents. And again, these, these kind of uh, peg a character as far as what class they're from. So... Um, these are not going to be your posh people. These are going to be your. Uh, uh, well, these are going to be the common folk. I would say the common folk. Um, th these are probably the most relatable to most people who live in um, the United Kingdom. Uh, these accents you'll hear a lot. Um, now, in the UK as well, there is um, there is. Uh, uh, popula uh, populations here, uh, little pockets here and there, uh, of Scottish that have come and uh, they are parts of the of the UK. Um, they they're more of a you're you're gonna it, it, it's not as the UK Scottish it's not as pronounced as you might think as a brave heart uh, or brave. Um, you're not going to be Merida 
oh, or John Wallace uh, in the UK. Um, there is that flavour, but it is still London. So your your Scott, your your United Kingdom Scott accent is is going to have uh, still everything in the back of your throat and a mild rolling of your R's, but it's not as pronounced as Merida uh, from Brave. Um, which is also a really fun accent to do. Um, but it's going to be still on the English side um, with a little Newcastle and and uh, Liverpool mixed in because these are people who came from Scotland and have been living in the UK uh, for some time now. So it's more of a conglomeration of, of all the sounds. And that's what the fun thing about the UK uh, accents are. Uh, especially now that a lot of them are more contemporaryized, um, anywhere you go, you're going to hear sounds of different um, of of different influences because there are so many different uh, types of accents within the UK. Um, I'm sure the same can be said about uh, the southern states of America. Um, and I'm sure they can peg where everybody else is from. Like, I know Texans uh, can hear an Oklahoma accent and be like, you're an Okie. And, um, <laughs> and somebody from Oklahoma definitely knows the difference between an Oklahoma accent and, and a Texas accent. Um, but we are going to be playing with those <clears throat> uh, throughout the camp, which is going to make camp a, a lot more fun, I think, uh, this summer. Because it was a lot of fun... We kind of had, uh, we dabbled in it <clears throat> and we got our, our, our toes wet um, during Oliva in learning how to, to say the words. <clears throat> and you guys took to it a lot uh, quicker than, <clears throat> than I think you thought you were, were gonna. Um, but this one's just gonna be kind of a total immersion, uh, which will be fun, which will be a lot of fun. We'll try to stick to the basics. Um, and we'll, we'll most likely have uh, pronunciation and uh, workshops and, and this uh, this and that. Um, learning how to sing in an accent. Uh, well, we'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Because <laughs> um, sometimes you don't, you don't necessarily have to have a shh as pronounced of an accent as... Nobody really wants to hear a Scotsman sing. It, it's <clears throat> kind of like, you know... A, would be like sing, hearing a Klingon sing in church. So <clears throat> we're probably gonna uh, just kind of stick to basic uh, <laughs> pronunciations uh, and we'll let Miss, uh, whoever our, our musical director is uh, direct us in that direction. But um, I urge you to have fun uh, and please get excited. This is a really, really fun show and there's, there's characters for everybody. There, we're gonna, you know, you, you know how we do. We're gonna find little moments for everybody. Um, and I'm sure the costumes are going to be hysterical. Um, please get excited. Have fun. Start now. Watch, uh, I, I, like I said, start watching the Harry Potter movies um, for accent work. And um, just have fun. And this is Mr. Francis. And I will see you uh, when I see you again. Bye.